Hello, it's David. Got the falcon back on the bench today because I want to address an issue that's been annoying me for a little while uh, regarding the uh, hard disk in my falcon here. Now, um, my falcon has an SD card adapter. It's, it's got an internal um, 2.5 inch style uh, IDE socket, uh, IDE cable, early, uh, early one, single channel, master only. Um, with an SD, uh, an IDE to SD card adapter in there, and, and I'm mostly run off an SD card, and that's absolutely fine. Here we are, see, look, it's booted up uh, all very happily, and um, when I reboot here, it's detected all my partitions and drives. I'm running Emutos here. There we go, look, we've got C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J partitions, uh, and the I and J partitions are large X2 file systems. So uh, that's actually absolutely fine from uh, from my point of view um, but getting software onto here as the sizes increase these days is uh, becoming increasingly difficult um, what happens is that you uh, um, you can either you know plug in the uh, a network adapter on the side here and try and um, copy things across that way that's really not a proper network adapter it's not very reliable um, you can go through the the go tech I've got a uh, USB GoTech in the side here, and you can actually have um, larger uh, virtual disks than the uh, the 1.44 that the Falcon native to, natively supports. But that's again very slow. Obviously, serial is is a non-starter in terms of speed. So the obvious thing to do would be to whip out the SD card and pop it in my Mac. The problem is that Atari, in their infinite wisdom, decided that their data lines would be Big Endian. Now the Motorola 68030 that's in here is a Big Endian chip. That means that if you address, for example, um, address zero, uh, and you ask for a word, two bytes in other words, the uh, the, the first byte, the high, uh, um, the higher of the two bytes, the most significant eight bits of the word come first, and then the least significant eight bits of the word. Now that might make sense that you know that's probably how we would all do it if we wrote down a bit of paper on a bit of paper how we would lay out memory but it's not actually how a lot of modern and at the time uh, a few retro as well in you know the Intel x86 Z80 6502 didn't do it like that they had what they call little Indian systems where actually the least significant bits eight bits come first and then the most significant Atari decided to stay with that principle when it came to their IDE, and so all of the data on the IDE is stored in Big Endian format. The problem is then when you put that uh, SD card into your um, modern computer, be it a Mac, Linux box, Windows, whatever, it's expecting to see it in the opposite orientation, and you get a notification that the uh, SD card is unformatted, or you need to initialize it, or, or something like that. Now, um, what you can do is when you back up your SD card, I'll do this quite often, pop it into my uh, my Mac and do a backup, uh, and you can swap the bytes on the fly to the backup, and then you can actually access it like you know the, the partition like it were a hard disk in, in for example in Hatari, which is which is very useful. But that's a slow process. I think it's got a 16 gigabyte um, SD card in there, and to copy all of that and copy all it back again takes a long time. It's not a fast way of getting data onto the Falcon. And I'm talking about you know hundreds of megabytes kind of scaled stuff you know like if I'm putting a quake on here or doom or um, you know like the, the, the bad mood project or um, disk images for the Mac emulator that uh, is quite slow. So what can we do about it? Well, we know that the Falcon can read um, PC formatted floppy disks. Fine. Can it read PC formatted hard disks? Well, yes and no. It actually depends on the driver. There's nothing in the OS itself that actually recognizes uh, hard disk partitions. That's all done by a driver. Now, this will actually, uh, I, sorry, I have to say that again, will um, actually interact properly with hard disk partitions. Um, it understands FAT16 natively, and if you presented a FAT16 partition uh, in an appropriate in, uh, driver matrix, it can access it. FAT16, I think, needs to be below 
uh, two gigabytes if memory serves, and I think the Falcon uh, native can go up to one gigabyte. So we can have one gigabyte FAT16 partitions formats on a PC, and this would read it if the byte order were the correct way around. So there are routes to do that. Let me show you. Firstly, apologies for the background noise. There's a helicopter droning overhead for some reason. Um, this is a close-up of what we've got inside here. And this is the arrangement that I tend to use. This is a... There we go. This is a PATA, P-A-T-E, Parallel A-T-A, P-A-T-A, sorry. Uh, Parallel A-T-A um, interface. This is uh, what natively comes with the Falcon. It's attached to the... Uh, uh, the motherboard that that's not a socket and that would fit a two and a half an old style two and a half inch uh, laptop drive and there'd be a bracket that would sit under there and connect that now what i've got is an uh, sd card to ide uh, adapter this is specifically for that 44 pin uh, small pitch um, format and you pop your sd card in there and all is happy now I actually use an SD card uh, extension ribbon and this is uh, so that I can actually hang the, uh, the SD card out um, the, the socket itself at the, at the back of the machine and uh, have a easy access to that SD card. But as I say, it's not in the correct format. So if I wire this back in, and pop out my main hard disk card. What I'm gonna do is to pop in this card instead, which is PC formatted. This actually has, uh, format, it's been formatted uh, with FDisk, or it's been partitioned with FDisk under, under Linux. It's been formatted as FAT16. The partition types are hex six, that indicates FAT16, and they are of various sizes. Now let's turn this on. Now we boot up in Emutos because that's what I've got flashed on my DFB1 accelerator at the moment. And you can see it's detected. Well, it's got all the acceleration bits and bobs on there, 128 megabytes of all RAM, but there's drive C, D, E, and F have been uh, detected on this uh, SD card. And if I, uh, if I open it up and if, yeah, well, let's open it up here and we'll have a look at drive C and uh, sure enough, I've got some test files on there. Drive D, drive E and drive F. Now we go from uh, disk C here being a, uh, a very modest 32 megabytes up to uh, disk F uh, being the full one gig, just you know as way of experimentation. So perfect, what's wrong with this? Well, and how does it work? Well, the key thing here is that I'm running Emutos. Now, Emutos is very clever and it has its own built-in hard disk driver and it's quite a modern operating system this particular one you can see i, I built in may of last year and it uh, it can understand not only the pc um partition table but also that the bytes are going to be reversed and it can automatically you know in in processor swap those bytes around and so we get a perfectly perfectly sound working environment the problem comes if i'm not running emutos So I'm just going to apply a jumper here. This is just a fly lead with my uh, DFB1 uh, jumpers extended. I'm going to apply a jumper there to disable my onboard flash memory and we'll reboot. TOS4. No drive C. Well, that's perhaps uh, to be expected because um, TOS 4 doesn't contain its own hard disk driver, as, as explained. So uh, let's load uh, a hard disk driver from the floppy. So this is HD driver 11. This is probably the uh, best and uh, most ubiquitous um, hard disk driver on uh, the Atari platform. And if we run this from the floppy disk, it should detect, oh, there we go. It should detect very quick. Should detect our hard drive. And there we go. We've got our uh, four partitions. But oh, I can't actually open them. Ha. 
that's the problem. Whilst HD driver can in fact uh, understand the PC partition table, no trouble at all, and it can find the four and it can declare them, there's nothing happening. And the reason is that byte order is incorrect. Now HD driver is quite a clever program and it itself can perform a byte swap operation for you. However, you then can't boot the disk. There's no way of writing the hard driver, hard disk driver onto the boot sector of the disk and have it execute because the byte order is reversed. I'm sure it could be you know, technically done. In fact, there are other uh, drivers out there that, that do. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it's not something that uh, uh, the author has uh, decided to support. So here we go, Atari IDE, and you can see we've got all of our, our uh, drives here. Uh, I don't know whether we can actually see the... Uh... No, that doesn't help. Can we see the current uh, layout? Uh, there we go. So the compatibility is Windows and byte swapping, but, uh, well, uh, it's not working, is it? So what can we do about this? Well, the most obvious thing that comes to mind is why don't we have two different disks? Now there are adapters, I've got an SD, uh, a CF card adapter here, sorry. There are adapters that actually do have two slots. This one has an S, uh, a CF card slot on, uh, on one side, and there's actually space for a CF card slot on the other, but it's not fitted, but you can get them with it fitted. And this would allow you to have, if you wanted, a boot, uh, disk, in effect, on one side that is in the Atari uh, Big Endian format and a Windows formatted one on the other side that um, you could get logically uh, swapped for your transfer. That's fine, except that I don't want to use a CF card adapter, to be honest. I'm an SD card kind of a guy. And the SD card adapters only seem to have one card on them, at least, well, the ones that I've seen certainly the ones that I have. So I think I'm going to have a little dabble into the hardware realm. Firstly, there's no reason that this cable can't support a master and a slave, it's just there's only one port on there. So why don't we make an adapter to allow us to connect two of these, or one of each, see whether we can configure them to act as a master and slave. This has a, a jumper on it for master and slave. This one doesn't, but you know, we can give it a try. And perhaps we might also throw a little curveball in there and see if we can do something that slightly helps the situation when it comes to talking and booting to on, from uh, PC formatted SD cards. So this is my board design, and I'm going to talk briefly about my friends at PCBWay once again, who are kind enough to sponsor this video. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to uh, plot, choosing my, uh, my layers, uh, exporting those. Then I'm going to generate drill files, checking its postscript millimeters, decimal, this kind of thing, and generating those as well. In the uh, directory where I find those files, I'll zip them all up, and I'll uh, name that there as my, uh, my IDE adapter. Now, it's time to go to pcbway.com and click on Instant Quote. I choose Quick Order PCB and I select Add Gerber File. This is where my zip file comes in. And you'll see that it processes that in no time at all and shows me a preview of the little board that I've designed there. Just scroll down here and I'll check the settings are as I want, and for the vast majority of cases, the defaults are perfect. Although, when I'm doing debug boards, I prefer VIA's not covered. It allows me to probe more easily. Now, choosing my location, I'm in the UK, gives me the choice of uh, shipping, and you can see that there's quite a few options available here. The, uh, the FedEx there at uh, uh, $18 looks quite reasonable, or, you know, if I'm not in a rush, then uh, the global standard shipping there at $4 is incredible value. So there's the total. That would cost me $9.09. .09. Hit save to cart, and away we go. Now, obviously, PCBs are in their title, but PCBWay offer 
a variety of other maker related functions. Please go and have a look at their website. You'll find information there on CNC milling, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and PCB assembly as well. So my PCB has arrived and here it is. Doesn't it look fabulous? Um, basically we've got a master and a slave on this side and our host connection is on the other. These are the uh, the only sockets I can get actually. Um, the pin headers are perfectly fine. They're 44 pins, but um, yeah, it's a 50 pin uh, socket. So there'll be a bit hanging over the end and I might cut it away. It does fit perfectly well into my uh, SD card adapter here, but yeah, there's bits hanging over the end. So we have to be careful that we plug things in uh, the right way around. Uh, fortunately, they do fit like that and uh, I could saw that off after the event. Uh, to be honest, I just don't think I'm going to bother. Now the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that there's two connection headers to the computer on uh, my uh, board there, and more on that anon. Uh, but first things first, um, I soldered this LED on backwards. So uh, this is uh, time for me to come back to the, uh, the soldering uh, station here and uh, try and correct this, although I'm making a pig's ear of it, truth be told. Um, basically the little uh, curve, the, the, uh, the silk screen ring uh, that is open at one end and closed at the other the uh, the arrow on the little led should point towards the closed end so the the green line in this case points towards the closed end and uh, that will uh, get us the right way around now okay that's absolutely drunk there but um i think good enough for government work and we'll just get the uh, the old led tester from the uh, uh, the multimeter on that uh, again get the priority right there we go we've got a nice a nice bright activity light. So here's our assembled board. I'm going to, uh, because this one has a jumper on it, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that this one can operate in slave mode. Uh, so I'm going to pop that into slave mode and we'll pop that there in the one that says slave. This is actually a cable select uh, slave and master. The fact that it has a jumper suggests to me that it probably won't support cable select. Um, pin one is that way around. We'll pop that in there. And I'll put in my SD card adapter as well. Let's, um, I'll do away with the fly lead for the purpose of, uh, of testing this. So I'm just going to pop that in there as well. There we go. And pin one is over there, pin one is over there. So that slots in that way around. There we go. So there's our double stack of hopefully master and slave. And I'm just gonna go with our host connector uh, uh, socket or, or slot, I should say, uh, to start with. And we'll then talk about what we can do with the other connector on there. 
Okay, so we're going to boot into Emutos again uh, because that's uh, the easiest um, to work with, as as discussed in terms of the uh, the byte swapping. And we've got ourselves a C, D, E, F, and G drive being detected. Let's uh, let's see what we've got. So drive C is the one that we saw at the uh, the start of the video. That was uh, my test software. There we go. Yep. So that's the first four, so that should be one gigabyte. Sure enough. And we've got a drive G as well, and there's drive G. That's got HD driver installed on it. So I wonder if we can auto boot. The problem is though, that's on the slave. That's on the, that's on the uh, CF card. So uh, I'm, I suspect that that, um, that won't work under, uh, under TOS. Obviously it will work perfectly under Emutos, but then most things do. It's a modern, up-to-date, open source operating system, and I thoroughly recommend it. But let's uh, throw the switch and see what happens under TOS 4. So here we go, TOS 4, same setup. Skip the memory test. I can hear, ah, oh, there we go, C, D, E, F, G. This is actually loading, I can hear it loading off the floppy disk. So sure enough, it didn't boot automatically from our slave, sadly. But let's see what this is detected under HD driver. Pleased to say, by the way, our activity light is, uh, is working. I did see it flickering there on boot up. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so there we go. We've got our four um, PC formatted partitions. There you go, uh, hex six. And we've got our... Uh, normal 256 megabyte um that's the cf card uh, adapter which is in big gem format so that's that's conventional atari partition those are um pc partitions so uh let's uh, exit and have a look so drive g as expected we can access our atari partition uh, with the big ending format uh, perfectly well Yep, but HD driver is not happy with the byte swapped or the non byte swapped PC ones there. So um, sadly, that doesn't really help us in this case. But what we could obviously do, if I had a uh, CF card uh, that would um, be uh, what's the word uh, that I could plug into my, if I had a CF card adapter for my PC, then I could use the CF card to transfer. 256 uh, megabytes, but what I would have to do is to format it in HD driver in the Windows compatible mode that HD driver supports and then boot off my SD card. So I can probably do that. Let's just um, see what I can work around first though. And there by the way is the activity light blinking away as I copy some files around on the, uh, on the hard disk. Oh, that was so quick. <laughs> Try that again. Blink, 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 blink. So, activity light works nicely. Okay, here we go. So this is probably the daftest uh, collection of uh, cables and extensions and adapters you've, uh, you've ever seen. Um, here we have uh, my SD to uh, patter adapter, uh, which is acting as the master. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my normal uh, master boot uh, SD card and put it in there. That's the one. Every all the partitions in there are in uh, Atari style Big Endian data format. The CF card adapter is acting as a slave. I've put that jumper over there. It's, it's working for, uh, well as the slave, uh, but I can't use this. A uh, little 256 uh, megabyte uh, CF card for anything because I don't have anything else that takes a CF card. They even have an old camera. So here's my idea. I'm going to place into the CF card slot a CF to SD adapter. So <laughs> I'm going to adapt the CF back to SD, which will then obviously be adapted to IDE, which will then be plugged in as a slave. <laughs> so I'm going micro SD to SD, SD 
to CF. CF to Pata 44, which is mounted as a slave with a another SD card adapter underneath it as the master. Let's try this. The red cable, by the way, here is pin one, and on my board, pin one is marked on the side here and here. Uh, also, you can tell it by the square on the other side. I don't know if I can get the light in there. The, uh, the actual pin has a square pad. So um, also, I've left these overhanging ones on the non-pin one side, if that makes sense. So let's get that lined up. Just make sure it's in, in all the appropriate places. There we go. <laughs> let's, uh, let's throw the switch and see what we have. Okay, there's the TOS logo. I can see that we've got a solid activity light down here. I think that's probably the slave master slave relationship not being quite perfect. Uh, ha -ha, there we go, auto boot. We haven't gone through the uh, there we go. We haven't gone through the, the floppy that time. That was all off the hard disk. So yep, there's my normal uh, boot disk. Has uh, all my normal stuff on it. No trouble at all. And uh, we should have, if we're lucky. An extra device. So C D E F G H I J We should have more than one device, shouldn't we? We should have four. Ah, but of course HD driver does not necessarily recognize that format. Let's have a look in the uh, HD driver utility itself and see what it says. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, that hasn't worked. It's only found the primary, I'm afraid. Oh no, there we go, press and refresh, and it pops up. That's uh, that's interesting. Yes, there's something not quite right, I think, about the uh, uh, the master-slave operation here. That maybe is not necessarily a long-term uh, strategy. And there we go, look, it has actually got all those on there. What about if I were to uh, re- Repartition this with right there we go toss windows and byte swapping. It does things slightly differently. HD driver, you have to have like dual compatibility, it doesn't support the toss stuff straight away. Uh, but there we go, let's try that. Yep, that's fine. Yep, I am. Okay. How will we start later? Have we got any more? Yeah, it's not showing up the uh, the extra partitions. Let's um, try with the reboot that it that it asked for. Now it's occurred to me it's possible that um, the uh, hard disk drive I have installed on my normal boot disk isn't configured properly, and I don't necessarily know the correct way of configuring it. So what I'm going to do instead is to boot from the floppy. There we go. That's from, booted from the floppy uh, disk instead, and see whether that makes any difference at all. Let's remove all of the devices. Install again. Ah, now this time we've gone past J, uh, I J, K L M S. So I think these are possibly our. Yeah, I think these are our, our, our new partitions. 32, and that should be one gigabyte. Excellent, okay, well, let's just, uh, let's test that out. Let's try copying uh, something of note on to drive um, N, and we will check it when we get to the other side. Let's copy Fuse, the, uh, the free Unix Spectrum emulator. Let's see whether we can now read that on the Mac. So unfortunately that uh, combination, whilst technically it might work, uh, fails uh, on one uh, slightly uh, important component. Um, the whole idea was to have this extension in here so that I could remove that SD card with ease. And um, 
Ah. Uh, yeah. Mm. No. Not gonna work. Okay, what I haven't uh, done much so far is to talk about the other connector on here. So this is our normal host connection, and over here we've got host connector with byte swap. And you can see there's a whole load of vias and uh, different routing uh, options over here, which are, is basically doing a hardware swap on those um, data, well not data, on the entire data bus, not just the uh, uh, not just the data stored on here, but the entire data bus is hardware swapped. Now that should, in theory, offer better performance when it comes to um, interchanging uh, disks with um, PCs, Macs, Linux, etc. Um, because the, um, the software itself doesn't have to perform that byte swap, and we can just use uh, this natively. But of course it isn't just the data on the disk on the SD card that's swapped. It is all of the control signals as well. So it requires a special driver to be able to uh, uh, to be able to work with it. So let's plug it in and actually see how it behaves and what we can make work with it. This is a recently reformatted PC disk. Okay, so our swapped uh, byte uh, disk is uh, installed here, and or rather our PC disk is installed here with our swap bike uh, connection here, and here we are booting into TOS4, and um, the activity light goes on, stays on. I can hear the floppy disk firing up and loading the driver. That um, didn't pick anything up from there. Uh, let's uh, try and install the drives. This is HD driver, of course. Nope, hasn't picked anything up. And if we try and open drive A, it has actually messed up entirely the uh, uh, floppy disk access as well. So HD driver does not like the uh, swapped byte, or uh, um, they, they, this is sometimes referred to as twisted cable, because you can achieve the same effect by cutting your IDE cable and rotating uh, the data lines around. Uh, but HD driver, not a happy bunny. Let's try Emutos. Emutos, obviously, more modern operating system, understands these things a lot better, has detected our four drives. Brilliant. Can we access them? You betcha. No trouble at all. So Emutos works well with the uh, twisted cable swapped byte approach, but then it worked well without the swapped byte approach anyway. So what benefit does using the twisted cable actually offer if you're restricted to Emutos? Well, the simple answer is speed. Now, what I've done is actually run some comparisons, and I'm going to put them on the screen just after this. But you can expect to see, depending on the speed of your processor, because the faster your processor, the quicker you can swap those bytes. You can expect to see between, say, 30 and 500% uh, increase in disk access speed by using the hardware swap and Emutos. But it doesn't help us if we want to boot TOS, does it? Um, is there an alternative for that? So here we are back in TOS 4, and as expected, the light goes on and nothing happens, um, and we boot from the floppy. The light doesn't go off you'll note. Now that is pr primarily because TOS4 is trying to auto boot, it's trying to look for the hard disk driver on the hard disk, and because we've swapped those bytes over, we're actually getting rubbish, we're generating rubbish, it's looking in the wrong place, but it is triggering something, and so this busy indicator is, is coming on. Um, however, that's not what I want to show you. HD driver is not the only driver on the market. Pera Putnik offers a free, and I'll link it down below, set of drivers uh, which will work with PC formatted hard disks. Now this is, uh, this is the set that you get here. 
there's straight through, blitter enabled, and twisted cable drivers. Now, I'm going to run the twisted cable driver and you'll see that it fails. Can't detect the disk. But what you'll notice is that that errant busy indicator has gone. And if I were to run this now again, it now detects the disks. There we go. So that's actually because TOS has tried to get involved and has messed things up. Um, but running it twice will fix the problem. And there we are. Look, there's our free Unix emulator in there. This, by the way, uh, AHPT 94. This is the program I used to determine those speeds earlier on. And uh, I'll pop some up uh, from uh, here as well. Uh, this is the logical transfer rate that I'm talking about here. And you can see that this particular driver uh, running with my accelerator fork and comes in at two and a half megabytes per second uh, with the twisted connection. Tell you what, I'll do it on screen for comparison. I'll run it again, having switched back to straight through connection. Okay, here we are. We're back. We're in straight through connection mode this time. So I'm going to be using this uh, non-blitter, because we don't want to use the blitter on the Falcon anyway, non-blitter driver. This should tech, uh, detect the same hard disks. This works with PC formatted disks. That's the whole point of it. Should detect the same ones. And I should be able to run the same speed check. The difference here is obviously that the byte swap is being done in software. Now I've got a very fast, uh, I've got a um, 50 megahertz uh, 68030 on here, which does the byte swap quite well. But if you had a slower system or a standard ST, that improvement would be much more marked. So 1900, uh, 1.9 megabytes per second compared to two and a half megabytes per second, and that's at the small end of the difference. That's what the twisted cable can bring you. So I think we'll leave that there for today's video. Um, if you're interested in one of these little experimental boards uh, that I've built up here, um, I will make these available on my uh, PCBWay uh, project page. I will uh, link that in uh, down below. In order to build them, obviously you need the boards yourself. You need a, uh, this is a two millimeter uh, pitch um, double socket strip. Should be 44 pin, these are 50 pin, you can make uh, you can make them work like I uh, like I showed there. They will just hang over the end, and you can either saw that off, clip it off, or ignore it. Um, and two millimeter pitch, uh, forty four pin headers for the um, the computer connection. Now, okay, I didn't really solve all of my problems today. I can't do anything now that I couldn't have done already with uh, with Emutos. So. The, uh, the next step in uh, this project uh, would be to uh, either look at uh, alternative drivers, drivers that would allow me to auto boot perhaps, or uh, potentially I could do some more work in the hardware realm, perhaps correcting for the, um, uh, the registers being uh, byte swapped as well. And uh, I do know uh, that uh, Christian Zietz has done something similar in the past for uh, full-size uh, IDE um, drives on the uh, the ST series. Uh, but um, in terms of this 44-pin, uh, 2.5-inch uh, uh, device pitch, I'm not sure there is, uh, there's anything available at present. So that's, uh, that's potentially an option now that um, CPLDs are becoming available again. Um, certainly I would do a uh, any potential development board with a CPLD, and then perhaps we could optimize it down to some discrete or individual components. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that informative, if not completely satisfying. Catch you next time.